Well, hello friends, uh, Sniz here, and today we are in the Temple of Time, kind of doing the Pink Bean prequests, which are also sort of your requirement prequests for your fifth job advancement, which, as you can see, we're not very entirely close to, but we are nearing. Uh, Temple of Time prequests consist of multiple things. Mainly, you're just going to be jumping from room to room, clearing 333 of the mob within that room. Uh, there are a few outlier quests, as in you'll be collecting some items, but for the most part you're just killing 333 mobs of whatever mob is in that room, and then you report back, and then rinse and repeat until you get to the end. Uh, they're technically like two quest lines alongside each other because you run into the Forgotten Temple Keeper or whatever, or the Temple Keeper with Forgotten Memories while you're doing the killing quests, and then you sort of just do his quests alongside your killing quests. Either way, at the end of it all, you'll have the pre-quest for fifth job done, and you will also have Pink Bean as a boss unlocked. It's a daily boss. Uh, can't really say much about it right now because I did not fight it immediately, and yeah, I did eventually kill it, but I don't know at what point or what time it is. I just know it's not going to be covered in this video. Other than that, after finishing the Temple of Time, which I, I'm only really going to show the second phase of it, because I think I came back to it later and completely finished it off, but, you know, for now, just know that you can complete the whole questline, but as you can see in this video, I'm fighting mobs that are outside my level range, as in I'm above their level, and I'm still not clearing them very fast, because I don't have a lot of damage, so I think this is why I cut it here, and I moved on to different activities to try and get myself more damage. So, uh, probably like two episodes ago now, I, I know, it's like, there's only like 12 episodes and I still lose track, but anyways, about two episodes ago, I believe I covered Commercy and it was all over the place, but the general idea of it is you're going to be making dinero or, uh, currency to buy these Sweetwater items called the Tattoo and Monocle. There's other Sweetwater it items which you can get as a drop from the bosses fought, on the voyages, but since they're very rare and we don't encounter one, we're not going to cover it. Uh, but in this short clip, I'm just showing a solo voyage run because that's about all I can do because I didn't unlock- you have to do a, a certain amount of solo voyages until you can unlock the first world travel because you have voyage locations all over Commercy. And then once you have done so many of those, you can buy a uh, permit to trade to other locations outside of Commercy. And once you buy the first one, which is Mulong, you then have access to the uh, party quest version of Commercy. Uh, I don't touch that for a while because the characters on my other accounts that are Commercy ready are much higher leveled. So since I want to solo as much as possible, even though I can get the bosses, I won't be able to kill them. They're just going to kill me because they're like 20, 30 levels higher than me or, or whatever. They're like level adjusted, but they're still insanely strong and I'm very weak. So not worrying about that. We will still do the solo voyages because solo voyages have its own uh, key role. There's, you have a separate amount, a separate counter from your party quest. You have three runs on your party quest and then you have a set amount of energy, and when you use up all that energy, you're done for the day. So doing your party, uh, doing your solo voyages, you also can gradually gain experience for your ship and eventually upgrade your ship. I've mentioned this before, but there's three tiers of ships. The first tier is the one I'm on right now, which is like this cargo ship. Then you go to a sh sailboat, and then you go to the dreadnought, which has more energy and six spots instead of four. I, there's really no difference between the cargo ship and the sailboat to my knowledge. It's just that it's a stepping stone. Uh, to upgrade your ship, you have to be at level 10 of the whatever tier you're at and have 200 dinero for the first upgrade and 500 dinero for the second upgrade. Uh, other than that, it's it's a lot of... It's just a, little, it's just a daily, another daily to do. Uh, don't worry about, like, op optimizing your routes for the most XP or most dinero. Personally, especially where I am currently, since I'm way ahead of where I'm actually talking about, 
I just did the highest tier of voyage I could do that would uh, give me the most bosses. And I tried to use it and make it so I always used all 100% of all 100 of my energy. I mean, obviously you don't need to do that, but you will eventually once you get to the Mulong uh, voyage, that's 20 energy, so that's five runs, and then you'll get a 25 run at Rien, 25 energy per run at Rien, and then eventually a uh, four. It's either 30 or 40. It's 30 because 120. Yeah, it goes four times into 120. Um, either way. Those will be your goals, but they are the last three voyages you can unlock. Uh, with, yeah. Either way, you'll be doing this daily, uh, hopefully, because more bosses equals more chances to get loot. And although this the party quest has a higher chance for items to drop from the Sweetwater category, you still have a chance of getting them in solo voyages, along with the fact that you can make dinero to upgrade your boat if you want to keep doing voyages and also buy the tattoo and monocle which as mentioned before unless you're extremely lucky and somehow got i think it's actually the lotus not the lucid but damien eye patch and lotus machine mark um, from the hard versions and a pair of them you're going to be using the sweetwater monocle and tattoo and you're going to be using one for drop slash meso and the other one for your damage gear so with that covered, uh, yeah, there's bosses along the way, you fight them, you kill them, there's not much else to say, but you do it daily and you hope you get lucky. So this part, I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to slide it into this episode because I'm not sure how much I already recorded, but I think I'm going to step into it a little, at least the starting bit of it. Um, much like Commercy, uh, being its own quest line to unlock a daily that's very important, there is Golix. Golix is GMS exclusive to my knowledge, and it contains the two two set effects that are just the best in the game. Um, basically, at the end of this quest line, you unlock the ability to fight this golem called Golix. It's the corrupted world tree or something crimson wood heart tree i don't know it's some sort of tree that got corrupted and uh it's it's a boss the way it works is there's four parts to the body there's two shoulders an abdomen and a head depending on how many parts of the body before the head taken out decides the difficulty of the boss and how much hp i'll have and pdr and all that good stuff so if you take out one piece as in one of the shoulders or one the abdomen you're fighting uh, hard. If you take out none, you're fighting hell, which is the hardest. Uh, one is hard, two is normal, and all three is the easiest mode. Um, so there's obviously going to be reasons to fight a harder version besides just bragging rights, and depending on the tier you fight, you get a chance at different jewelry. Um, there's the Golix pendant, ring, earring, and belt. Uh, only the pendant and the belt drop from the Golix itself, the ring and the earrings you have to buy from the shop. Uh, so, with that in mind, you can only, there's four tiers, and since there's four tiers with the boss, that makes sense. There's craft, which is the worst, solid, second worst, reinforced, second best, and the best is superior. Uh, wearing, when wearing four of any of those tiers, so if I were to wear um, an earring, ring, pendant, and belt that is all in the solid tier, you get a set effect. But there's also the ability to take off and wear two pendants, since you have an additional pendant slot, to get the four, four equip effect without wearing, an, without wearing one of the items. But you will have to wear two pendants. Um, this is normally used because the belt, the Golix belt is good, but it can be replaced with a starred tyrant belt later on, but that's much further down the lane. So basically what you need to worry about is doing your daily Golix runs, and there's a correct way and an incorrect way to do them while you're trying to earn your reinforced earrings, uh, ring, and your superior ring and earrings, since those are bought from the shop within Golix. So, when you 
you get three entrance keys daily. You can get more from fighting um, fighting parts of Golix and from the Golix core itself uh, that you can use to re-enter. But as soon as you kill the head for the first time within the day, you can no longer enter even if you have more keys. So people have taken advantage of this and realized that each part of the body drops a Golix coin. If you miss that part of the body and hit fight the head, it'll drop the coin that you did not get from that body part. So, what people will do is they'll go in for the first time, kill the sh both shoulders and the abdomen and get three coins, go in again, leave without killing the head, go back in, do the same thing, leave without killing the head so you're at six coins, and then finally they'll go back in and choose whatever difficulty they're going to fight Golix in and finish with a total of ten coins. Uh, to put it in perspective, it's 160 for the superior ring, 150 for the superior earring, so already you're looking at a month, or, yeah, a month, because it's 310, uh, coins, so, 10 coins a day, 31 days, yeah, you're gonna be looking at a month at the very least to get your superior set complete, because you will be using the earring and ring as best in slot. Then there's also a reason to get the reinforced because the, when you get to later on and you want to have a drop gear set, the extra damage that the four set Golix supplies is still crucial, but you don't want to recube your gear every single time you want to switch to drop. So you use you end up using the reinforced set, which has a difference of 15% PDR compared to the 30% or 15% IED compared to 30% IED from the superior, and that brings us to another topic of PDR and IED, which we'll have to delve into. Either way, the course of Golix involves a long prequest, very low drop rate items, and low spawn rate too. So if you have a Kana that has completed this on a separate account, or a friend that has a Kana that has completed this, get them to kiss you. And I highly recommend also having drop rate increases because the last two quests within the Labyrinth, which is much later, it's like the the last thing you do before you get to fight Golix, uh, have some of the lowest drop rates for ETC items while being a quest item. It just takes so long to get all of them because you're required to get 100 and then 50. So quite low, quite time consuming, but the, at the end you have to do this if you want to be comparable in damage and since it's a great source of very crucial stats that will come in handy later on from the set bonus. So I felt like, I felt, I feel that I shouldn't just make another episode covering Golix uh, because there's not much more to cover except with these prequests. So I figured while these prequests are going on, I'd go over what that set effect is and why it is important. So the four set effect, uh, depending on the tier, solid and cracked aren't really worth talking about as it gives you the ability to debuff your enemies, which really isn't useful at all. But the reinforced and superior set give you 30% boss and 15 or 30% IED. You can guess from boss percentage, it's just an increased amount of damage you're going to do to a boss. I don't know where it is exactly in the damage formula, but it is only used when fighting a boss. So, hooray. Um, obviously 30% extra damage to a boss is welcome, and since we since Reboot has a damage percent passive, boss damage isn't is still valued, but I believe we there's a certain limit to what you want before you want to stop or start looking into IED and uh, attack percent, but that's a whole nother story with the WSE optimizer and all all of the complicated mechanics that MapleStory actually has that you just have to look for when you want to actually learn about the game. But IED is a very crucial part of the game and a lot of people don't understand it. So bosses, especially the end game ones, tend to have PDR. The highest PDR any boss has is three, 300%. Uh, PDR is percent damage reduction or physical damage reduction. There used to be MDR, which was magic damage reduction or something, but most people just look at it as it's damage reduction based on, and the value is a percent. So obviously if you have 300% damage reduction, you're not going to be doing anything. 
it does still register you as hitting ones, but again, like when a boss has billions of HP or even just even millions, you're you're not gonna put a dent in it with just doing one damage per line. So this is where IED comes into play, and it's short it's shorthand for ignore enemy defense. You can only have up to a hundred percent IED, but because it's multiplicative, every source of IED you get is has a diminishing return. So if I were to have an IED of 45%, which is great, it's that's humongous, but then I were to bring in a 20% IED, another source of IED that was only worth 20%, uh, instead of just adding up to 65%, you multiply, you take the 20% 20, 20 multiply that by the remaining 55% and whatever you get that, you add it back to the 45%. Uh, I don't know, have the math off the top of my head unfortunately, uh, but just know it's going to be less than 65%. Because of this, and because there are bosses with 300% PDR, which sounds ridiculous since you should only ever need 100% PDR, uh, you do need insane amounts of IED to fight these endgame bosses. Uh, Vellum, which is a Chaos Root Abyss boss, Chaos Vellum, has 300% PDR, and to even do 1% of your damage, I believe you need 67% IED. Um, mainly because 66% would get rid of 200%, and then the 67 would get rid of a bit of the leftover 100% that would cancel out your damage. So, what most people will recommend before you fight these bosses is to have at least like 93 to 95% IED. While in truth, there is no. There is no perfect IED amount to have as you just want to have IED at most as you at the most you can have without sacrificing other sources of damage and there's it's such a talked about uh, point in the game that there's mathematicians have done like people have researched it and made programs that do it for you that optimize your equipment so you know how much IED you should be aiming for uh, with using your with using your equips like uh so the wse is basically weapon secondary emblem uh i think i explained before but they can get attack percent damage percent boss damage percent and ied in certain circumstances and certain classes you might be sacrificing one of those nine lines for ied whereas you can normally get them from other sources to you know, get to an optimal amount of IED to the point where you don't need that. Um, overall, IED is a confusing subject, but the gist of it is the more you have, the more damage you're going to do, quote unquote. It's it's more necessary towards endgame bossing, but even the first Rudibus, Chaos Rudibus bosses you fight, like Von Bon, uh, Pierre, and the Crimson Queen have around 100% PDR, so still you want to have as much as possible because even 60% IED means you're doing 40% less damage. Or, yeah, 40% less damage, I believe. Hopefully, I got the math right. Uh, yes, but the game has a lot of mechanics and features and little statistics that you can look into to fully optimize yourself. But at the end of the day, it's just, it's all about digging deep and really learning the mechanics because a lot of classes seem simple at first, they, they but some have gimmicks from the get-go, but there's always some little trick you can do to quote-unquote up your game. And it's just important you keep in mind that there are some generics across classes, like all classes will end up optimizing their weapon secondary and emblem. All classes are going to be going for some of the same best in slots, but there are some exceptions. Like Demon Avenger is completely outside, completely different uh, because it's an HP reliant class. But just to keep in mind that we're doing Golix is important for the, for the set effect mainly. Of course, the items are great, but because you get a thirty percent IED set effect from this from the four set of superior items. That, that alone, alongside the stats, is basically the reason you would go for it on Reboot. 
I, there is also the three set, two set, and two set effect of a superior, which I believe is like percent HP, percent um, MP, a flat stat bonus, weapon attack, magic attack bonus. But the big one is the boss damage and P, uh, IED, which is awarded when you have the full four set effect because of that reason. Just keep in mind that Maple Story, as we continue to dive into it, is only going to get more confusing because I'm not going to know how to explain it very well, and I'm still learning myself. So I'll do my best because this is kind of from the perspective of a solo progressor, and I'm making progress, but it's hopefully at a steady pace enough. I just got to get on top of uploading. Anyways, I will see you later. Hopefully I didn't ramble for too long. Keep in mind that IED is important, keep in mind that there's loads of quest lines to complete, and other than that, I will see you next time. Bye friends.